Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Carpenter, CPP Events, here with Jason Turner, getting ready for ACCU. I'm excited for my 10 and a half hour flight. How about you? <laughs> I don't know how far it is actually for me, but I'm making a lot of international trips right now. So I'm not even, I'm like, hey, England, it's a little bit closer than <laughs> some of the other places I've been recently. I know I've probably got, you know, maybe maybe 45 more minutes than you being in Arizona versus Colorado, but... I don't know. Are you making any connections? Oh, no. No, I... Direct. I've, I've learned direct to London from Phoenix is the way I go now. Yeah, I think I have. I think I have a connection in Minneapolis or something. I forget right now. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but that just means if you want to come to ACCU, there's still time. Like there's plenty of flights. You just hop on and you can be in Bristol for the week and, and you yeah. can come take Jason's class on best and, practices, which is why we're here, right? Yeah, theoretically. <clears throat> <laughs> so if you don't know Jason, he, then you're not watching YouTube because <laughs> his C++ weekly channel has been going on for, you know, since 2016. 2016, March 23rd, 2016, something like that. 478 weeks street, straight now. Wow. I mean, that is, that's cool. I mean, aside from the dedication, that's just like. And uh, it's something is what it is. I've been, it's, I've released a video on a Monday every single week for 400 and so whatever it is, 70 something weeks straight now, except for one, it was like the 4th of July. So I released it on Tuesday, but since then I've, I've released them all on Monday. Yeah. And it's, um, it's funny. Cause as I'm thinking about it, I have some favorite episodes. Like, you know, I liked the one when you made the scrolling game framework or, you know, your best practices when it came to setting up projects and making mm -hmm. a basic project template and, um, I mean, I think the thing that I like most about your videos is they're, when I say consumable, like you get into some deep detail, but it's not like I'm having to watch an hour, you know, or an hour and a half thing. Right. And so, um, and you cover a practice, I get enough of it. Your examples are just concise and good. And so when you're compressing your two-day class into a one-day class... <laughs> That's exactly what students are going to get, right? Yeah, this is going to be. So I, I started looking at my material and I've got, you know, boilerplate stuff that's like, you know, intro to how my class works, you know, that kind of thing. So that we're all on the same page. And I'm just like, delete, 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 delete. None of that. We're not doing any of that this this time. We're going to pretty immediately dive into code reviews and examples. And the students are going to look at some of what I've decided are my favorite examples. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's worth saying, like, I, I, I've been teaching classes for a while now, seven, <laughs> seven years. I'm sorry, I'm looking down at what year it is currently no, I... on my laptop. Um, yeah. Seven years. I've been teaching classes for about seven years now. And I, I'm, I'm getting more and more and more dynamic. And I don't know... If you've been to my regular conference talks, if that even sounds believable, but it's to the point where I, I really don't know exactly what material we're going to get through. And that's all right, because yep. every student, every organization, every team has different needs and mm -hmm. it's impossible to predict what those needs are going to be. So we have examples and the students are going to work on these exercises and code reviews and we're going to see where the conversation leads. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be what it's going to be. And it's, and like I said, my favorite examples. So I interrupted myself earlier. I've been getting more and more dynamic. So, so I know which, uh, which examples generate the best discussion. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's just, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through these examples and, and we're going to see what topics come up. So I'm curious, you know, because you're talking about how you use code reviews and examples. Um, is there, and you know, Classes are different. Like I know people that they, they end up doing a lot of actual coding in the class. Mm -hmm. Is, is this more, is this more review and discussion versus coding? It's review and discussion, not very much hands-on coding. That's going to, it's dependent on the students. All right. Mm -hmm. So I have an example, I have a code review exercise and you can, treat it like a code golf game if you want to and try to make this thing as good and as simple as possible right with with your 
with your compiler or with mm -hmm. Compiler Explorer, if you want to. That's right. a, just a spectacular tool because it doesn't require the students to set up anything and they can execute yeah. the program right there. Or uh, I had this moment recently in a class where my students are getting all set up and they always are like, oh, I need to get internet access. I need to find a plug or whatever. And I'm like, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Right? Yeah. Like one, one laptop per four students is great. I want you yeah. talking to each other, learning from each other, learning how to work better as a team and developing a shared vocabulary. It's really important for the in, internal training classes that I do. Yeah. So I'm... Uh, I have for these students, and at one point my student's like, well, how am I supposed to do the exercise without a computer? I'm like, you're going to use your compiler that's in your brain. And he's yep. like, no. And I'm like, yes. Yes, you are. You should be able to read code and find the bugs in it. Like, yep. yes, we have spectacular tools, and I want people to rely on the tools. But isn't it better if you can write the code correct and good the first time instead yep. of... I, so anyhow, that's the idea is like, yeah, you don't even necessarily need a computer if you're willing to, I, I had students recently like literally writing the code out and I'm like, that's spectacular because studies have proven that when you write stuff, you remember it better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do that. That's great. Work on paper. Go old school. It, I mean, I can totally get that. The thing I was going to say is like, I think if I was trying to learn something like coroutines, you know, if I was right. trying to learn some new item that way, then I would definitely, you know, want the kind of examples and stuff mm -hmm. and being able to do that. But even the way you're explaining it, it's like I was thinking about uh, the other day I was talking with a coworker about, um, you know, the the kind of uh, data domain patterns that we might use, you know, where, you know, you have a data pattern, you know, a data model that's tying to your database. You have your domain model tying to whatever domain you're working with, in my case, credit cards, and we're using transforms to move between them. And right. when I first saw that, um, you know, I came from a much more top-down procedural thing. And so it was, it was kind of hard to grasp, but it wasn't so much writing it as it was, being able to build that mental model out, you know, seeing right. how the code was doing what it was doing. And then the more important part, because I learned about it, you know, I made my first naive attempt. And then in a code review, you know, I had a senior that was like, okay, well, what if we do it like this? Because, you know, the way I wrote it, it was more tightly coupled, you know, and then when we separated it out that way. And so I agree with what you're saying. It's like, especially in this kind of case, when you're learning best practices and stuff to look at code and be able to see not where it's wrong, but just where, you know, if you use a practice, you use a pattern, you can improve on that. Right. Um, and I'm guessing that that is going to be, you know, eight hours of people are going to get done with the class and they're going to be ready for the reception after that mind melt. <laughs> but, and, and it's, it also gives us the opportunity, not just say like, here is a solution that is better, but mm -hmm. here are the five different solutions that we might consider depending on, how generic do we want to make the code? Like, what what are we optimizing for right now? Is this going to be right. a core library thing? We're making it a template. How is constrained should it be? Or is this a thing that you know is only going to be a one-off in, in this one CVP file or whatever? And just, you know, weighing those different possibilities too. And, yeah. you know, I'm, it's interesting because I'm going to agree with you. If you're doing something like a coroutine, having a working example when you're done would be great. Yeah. But it's a fascinating example that you chose because I have a personal pet peeve against coroutines, and I'm sorry for people who have been involved in the process who are here, because it is I, I, like I, I I pride myself in being able to distill a simple concept or a particular problem or a feature into a single slide. Yeah, there is exactly one part of the C++ standard that is impossible to fit a complete example on a single slide. <laughs> and it would happen to be coroutines. It, it would happen to be coroutines, yes. <laughs> now, the closest we can get is we can put an example of using std generator on a single slide. Yeah. But you cannot, you cannot craft. I mean, and they don't, we want to be able to read the font, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, um, but I, I'm, I also agree with you, but also what I'm agreeing with you in both ways. Having a working example, great. Yes. Having 
a working example that you don't understand and now you just tweak it to make it do what you want it to do versus a conceptual mental model of the thing, I would prefer the mental model. Well, yeah. And, and I think the thing there is like, you know, to have an example that you tweak, I agree that doesn't work either. When you're doing those kinds of things, it's one of those part where I, I'm, I'm with you. You have to have that mental model so that you could have built it up. You know, even if you even if I've got training wheels helping me along, it's like I need to write that whole thing from scratch. Yeah. Um, make my mistakes in it and then, you know, have someone review it. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm going to I might have to continue on my rant about coroutines for one moment more. Can you name another single C++ feature that has that people have given multi day workshops on other than coroutines? I can think of only one others, one other. So you have to remember, I interview people that are doing multi-day classes. Now that doesn't mean you can't stretch something out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> That's true. I want, okay. I'm, I'm interested in what your one other is. My one other is modules. Okay. Otherwise yeah. the topics are much broader. C plus plus 20 or something like that. Yeah. Right. Anyhow. Yeah. No, that they are. <laughs> No, for a moment there, I was thinking of senders and receivers, too, from the fact of, you know, but uh, yeah, but I do think, you know, because I was talking with someone else. It's like there's those parts of C++, um, like STID generator, you know, now that it you to that example, you can kind of have a coroutine on a single slide. And I think yeah. there are those parts in C++ where, you know, we come up with the very, very basic building blocks. They get put into the standard, but it's not like. It's not like it's fleshed out enough. And then we get out, you know, uh, another uh, redition later, you know, so going from 23 to 26. And now we finally added on, you know, more pieces to the standard or or more library support. You know, it's like uh, stood uh, the executors, you know, executors, yeah. I remember, were supposed to be the big thing in 17. And now we are finally, you know, getting to where they're a usable feature. 26. Here we go. Yeah. They, yeah. So that's that one. I'm guessing we'll see. I, I, I haven't looked to see what workshops are being offered at conferences this year, but I'm guessing we'll see some on executors of the execution yep. model coming up. One or two day but, workshops. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, you know, back to, uh, to why we're actually here. Oh, yes. <laughs> you want to, you want to get your best practices in with Jason. Yes. He's going to be at ACCU in Bristol. There, you know, if you're already coming for ACCU, then you definitely want to take his class. And and at the end of the video here, I got a coupon code for 10% off his class. Oh, is that right? So, you know, you you have the benefit of getting it uh, a great class, um, starting the conference off right on Monday. And and yeah, more best practices to take back to to your place of business and and make everything run better and and, you know, hopefully less buggy. <laughs> hopefully less buggy. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Everyone who is watching this should go sign up for my class right now. Yes. And if you want the coroutines class, there's that too. But you want to do the best practices first. <laughs> is there a coroutines class at ACCU this year? I didn't even look. Yes, there is. But in actuality, you can do the ACCU uh, coroutines class with Phil Nash and do... Oh, right. And and do Jason's class and you get the best of both because you can start with the best practices with Jason and then you can do Phil's class online afterwards. So right. sign up for two. Hey. Sounds great. <laughs> hey, Jason, I appreciate you chatting with me today and I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing you at ACCU yeah. and getting the conference season started off right. See you in a week-ish. Yeah, yeah. that is for sure. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Have a great day. Thanks, you too.